So I can remember my third year back at Boston University, I met this girl named Sarah. And Sarah had one of those girlfriend faces. It was just like super adorable. You guys know what I'm talking about. She also was from Georgia, so she had this Southern accent. Nice to meet you. And she just had this warm energy that made me feel like that's gonna be my next girlfriend or my, my first girlfriend, I hadn't had a girlfriend yet. And what happened is that Sarah started hanging out with my friend group and it started to feel like me and her had this connection where sometimes we'd be watching a movie and we'd kind of be cuddling together. There's one time I remember me and Sarah fell asleep together on the sofa in the common room of our apartment while all my apartment mates went back to sleep. Nothing happened that night, but we were like sleeping and cuddling. We would text, we went grocery shopping together sometimes and it felt like we were moving in this direction where she was gonna be my girlfriend, but it never, it never happened because whenever I would like hint directly at it, she would shy away. And I was just thinking, you know what? She's different. She's not like all these other frat party drinking hoes out here. I'm going to wait and eventually Sarah's going to come around. And uh, that, that, that whole year passed and Sarah never came around. What happened was I wasted a year of dating at college and felt like a really big simp because of it. And that's number one no girl is special. For some reason, we like to tell ourselves the story that the girl that we're interested in is special and different than other girls. And because of that, we're gonna hold out and wait for her. or We're gonna keep pursuing her because eventually she's gonna be ready. And when we do this, bro, essentially we make ourselves the female in the dynamic. Like, think about it. It's such a female thing to do to build up this romantic story in your head about how you're gonna, you know, sweep this girl off her feet. It's more like she's gonna sweep you off of your feet and she's finally gonna choose you. Yeah, that literally never works out. And that's definitely one way that Hollywood has fucked the modern man because it happened in that movie, bro. And the seconds that you fall into this mindset that this girl's special and she's different than other girls and because of that, I'm gonna break the rules that I know I should normally follow, you're fucked. The mindset you have to take, and this is when my dating life completely did a 180 and turned around, is look, if there's a girl who I'm interested in or I find attractive, then I am immediately going to ask her, hey, you seem like a cool girl. Do you wanna hang out sometime? Because what this does is it immediately establishes the man to woman dynamic. I'm interested in you, I'm leading this forward in a romantic direction, and it's happening now. Because then what automatically happens is every interaction after this falls in line with this dynamic. And of course, if the girl turns you down or makes an excuse when you ask her out, well then you move on. She ain't special. She's not buying into that dynamic. It's not worth your time. Number two is the options game. So let's say you're interviewing for a job and you have a unique set of skills like Liam Neeson. And because of that, the company you're talking to, they don't really have any other options. You're the only suitable candidate. Well, now you have control. You can go talk to companies A, B, C, and D, and you can be like, hey, well, they offered me 150. What are you guys gonna do? Well, sorry, man, you know, I'd love to work with y'all. It seems great, but they offered me 155. What can you do? You got options, they don't. Now, the opposite situation is you're interviewing for a job, but there's five other qualified candidates. In this scenario, you don't have options, they do. So they can give you a low ball offer and be like, hey, 40K, take it or leave it. And it doesn't matter what you do, because they got options. The point is, whenever there's two parties involved, the one who has options is the one who's in control. And in the modern dating market, this is nine out of 10 times the female. Because if you're a female who has attractive looks, well, guess what? You're gonna get a lot of matches on dating apps. There's gonna be guys approaching you. There's gonna be guys sliding into your DMs on Instagram. And because of that, they have the power. They can play games with you and mess around and not reply to your text. And it doesn't matter because there's another guy waiting. But if you're able to flip this dynamic on its head and you establish yourself as a man with different options, then everything changes. Now you're in control. You can not respond to her text and she's gonna be chasing you. But how do you get there? You get there by developing your key masculine traits. You build up your body because women find strong men attractive. You build up your money because women find success attractive, even if they're not a gold digger. You level up your outfits and your style. You intentfully choose your, your facial hair, grooming. You get a haircut that matches your head shape. And then because we're living in a digital age, you know, that's just the nature of dating. You're gonna meet most of the girls you date through Instagram or dating apps. You also need to make sure that you're presenting yourself correctly through your photos. And look, you can be butthurt about this and say, no, dating apps only work for hot guys. But hey, that's the name of the game. So play the game or don't play it, but don't be a bitch and just whine about it. The good news is that most guys are way more attractive than they know. I've seen this through so many guys who've come through my Beast Dating Coaching Program. They think that they're ugly, but they just haven't optimized their style and they haven't learned how to take a proper fucking photo. And that's why I decided to partner with Justin Harder to be the sponsor of today's video. Justin is a top tier photographer who specializes in helping men 
can completely transform their dating profiles by helping them get optimized photos. Basically how it works is you fill out a quick questionnaire so his team can better understand your personality, hobbies, and interests. Then you're gonna work with their stylist to select some outfits that match your physique and your natural looks. Then it's time for the shoot, which is gonna take place in Florida. And Justin regularly has guys fly in from around the world to do this because first of all, Florida is a great place to visit year round, amazing weather, but he also has the connections to exclusive venues to help you get these very premium looking photos. They're gonna help you nail the right poses, figure out the right facial expression so that you're portraying yourself in the most attractive light possible. Look, the statistics show that women find 80% of men on dating apps unattractive. You want to be part of the 20% of men who have options. And because you're watching my video, I got Justin to hook it up. If you click that first link in description, that's going to allow you to schedule a consultation directly with Justin. And because you're coming from my video, you're going to get a 10% discount. Right, I'm gonna give you three scenarios and I want you to tell me how you would respond. First scenario, you're grilling a hamburger and you notice it's grilling too fast. The heat's up too high, the bottom of it's starting to burn. What do you do? Second scenario, you're driving on the highway, going kind of fast in the left lane. The car in front of you starts to slow down rapidly. You're not about to crash into it, but what are you gonna do? Third scenario, you're texting a girl that you wanna hang out with and she starts to take longer to reply to your messages. She's not answering some of them. If you try to make plans, she's non-committal. What do you do? Well, with the burger, I'd probably like flip it over and if it's past saving, throw it away and turn the heat down to another burger. With the car, yeah, I mean, I'll probably slow down so I don't get into a car accident, hit the brakes a little bit. Like I'm not gonna turn the heat up, burn the shit out of this burger. I'm not gonna eat that, that's gross. I'm not gonna put the pedal to the metal and crash into this car in front of me that's slowing down. So why in the world are we just gonna keep pursuing a girl who's showing low interest? Look, people are not complicated to analyze. All you have to do is pay attention to their actions and you can know what they want or what they don't want. So if a girl is doing these things and it feels like she's getting a little bit distance, you need to course correct the same way you would in avoiding a crash. She's taking hours or days to respond to your messages. They're very short responses. She always has an excuse why she can't hang out. These are clear actions that are letting you know her investment level has dropped. Her investment level is low. And this is when you must course correct to avoid the crash. All you have to do is simple. You just stop contacting her. Yeah, but David, she might lose interest in me if I stop talking to her. But what if I just send her one more message and, and then she's down to hang out? I can tell you from many, many experiences that here's what's gonna happen. If you do this when you first notice she's pulling away, so it's the first time she's starting to take longer to reply to the messages, one of two things is gonna happen. Either one, after a couple days, she's gonna get back to you because she's afraid now that she might lose you and she misread you and you're actually a high value guy she can't mess around with. That does actually happen pretty frequently. Now, the second option is that she does not get back to you and that would confirm that she's not interested, but at least you didn't waste your time and energy and effort waiting and hoping that this girl who's not interested in you would maybe eventually become interested in you. You avoided building the habit of becoming a simp who chases women around and you started establishing the habit of a guy who doesn't waste his time with girls who aren't interested. Number four is lack of lifestyle. We're all different. We all have different preferences in our lifestyle and it's important to, to understand these things so that we don't end up pursuing a girl who has a very different lifestyle. For example, I'm someone who really enjoys going to the gym. It's part of my daily routine. And because of that, I would never date a girl who doesn't also go to the gym. Similarly, I'm not someone who likes going out and clubbing and going to bars. So I would never date a girl who she wants to go out each weekend to the bars and the clubs. Even if she's not trying to like go do girls night out, which is kind of like a red flag and sketchy, she's trying to go out and party with me. What's gonna happen is this is gonna lead to a lot of situations that are awkward and not ideal where like, I'm pressuring her to stay in each weekend because I don't wanna go out and then it seems like manipulative to her or maybe she's pressuring me to go out and then it seems manipulative to me and the whole time we're out, I'm just trying to be like, hey, can we go home now? It's gonna kinda of like, can we go home now? Or maybe she doesn't like to travel because she gets nervous on airplanes and you're someone who wants to travel and see the world. Same thing. As soon as you notice that there's a lifestyle mismatch, it's time to stop chasing her and to move on. It can be strictly casual, but trying to force it past that stage, it doesn't matter how hot she is or how much of a, a connection you guys have. On a logistical level, there's gonna be fucking problems that are gonna prevent you guys from having a good relationship. Number five, it is not easy. So something that happens a lot with the guys in my coaching program is they'll tell me that they met this girl and she's awesome, but David, the only the only thing is that I live in city A and she just happens to live in city B and it's like, 
a three hour drive. And I think, you know, maybe we can make it work because maybe I can drive there one week and she can drive here the next weekend. Or maybe the girl's a nurse and she has this like nighttime schedule where she sleeps during the day and she works during the night and you work, you know, normal hours, you sleep during the night like a normal person. And it's always kind of hard to hang out because she's always tired and in a bad mood when you're trying to hang out with her. Or here's one that happened to me a lot. I'd meet a girl during the summertime and it would be awesome, but we both knew that, you know, when it got to September, she was going back to school or I was gonna be moving to Spain. Whenever there's a clear factor that's gonna prevent things from being easy, you need to step away. And look, I'm not saying that relationships should only be easy. You never gotta put in any work. There's never any hard times, but it's a very different thing if you're dating someone in a healthy relationship and then like a year down the line, something happens you guys have to deal with. That's very different than trying to force something to work with a girl when from the start, it's very clear this isn't ideal like chances are if you're trying to pursue a long-term relationship you're lonely and you feel like you're not gonna be able to create a convenient option in the same city as you and that's why you're settling for that or that's why you're trying to force it to work with that girl the whole point of dating and female companionship is to add value to our lives to make our lives better to share cool experiences with an awesome girl it's not meant to be something that complicates our life and creates anxiety and if you feel like there's a girl you're pursuing or you're even dating her and it's increasing your anxiety level from baseline or it's increasing the how complicated your life is from the baseline as if you were single that's already defeated the whole purpose of having a woman or multiple women in your life and that's kind of the whole point of this video if you get caught pursuing women who are not available because they're not interested in you because logistically it's not going to work out because you're so obsessed with the girl and you forcing it to work with her because you haven't created other options in your life because oh my god she's so special she's got to be my next girlfriend because we got this connection bro well now you've created this mindset you created this reality that dating is actually detracting from your life and making your life less enjoyable. And it's probably causing a lot of internal pain as well. It's far more effective to be focused on leveling up your body, your money, travel the world with different people, experience different culture, collect different experiences. And then when you notice women who are attractive, ask them if they wanna hang out. And if it happens to lead to a date and then it happens to lead to another date, that's good. But there's never a time when you need to force something to work. If you enjoyed this video, I recommend you check out this one next. It is about whether or not I regret getting married. It's only been seven months since I got married and things have changed. If you're new to the channel, click down there to subscribe because I release two new videos every single week and you don't wanna miss it. I'll talk to you in the next video. Stay beastly.